Welcome to our web service for the second Sunday after Epiphany, or for what we like to call it in this church, the 43rd Sunday in the season of hope. We've changed the format of the service this week to morning worship to reflect what we have recently been doing in church over the last few weeks. Thank you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. We now move to our prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the words of comfort our Saviour Jesus Christ says to all who truly turn to him. Come to me all who labour and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. The grace of God has dawned upon the world through our Saviour Jesus Christ, who sacrificed himself for us to purify a people of his own. Let us confess our sins. God, be gracious to us and bless us, and make your face shine upon us. Lord.
Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May your ways be made known on the earth, your saving power among the nations. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You, Lord, have made known your salvation and reveal your justice in the sight of the nations. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, grant us peace. We now say together our Gloria. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Our collect for today, this being the second Sunday after Epiphany. Eternal God, our beginning and our end, bring us with the whole creation to your glory, hidden through past ages and made known in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first reading is from the first book of Samuel, chapter 3, and reading from the first verse. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days and visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he couldn't see, was lying down in his room and the lamp of God had not yet gone out. And Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called out, Samuel, Samuel, and he said, here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I didn't call. Lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, you called me. But he said, I did not call you, my son lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time and he got up and he went to Eli and said, here I am for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak for your servant is listening. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. The next day, John saw Jesus coming towards him and declared, Here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who ranks ahead of me, because he was before me. I myself did not know him, but I came baptizing with water for this reason, that he might reveal, he might be revealed to Israel. And John testified, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water said to me, he on whom you see the Spirit descend and remain is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I myself have seen and have testified that this is the Son of God. The next day, John again was standing with two of his disciples. And as he watched Jesus walk by, he explained, Look, here is the Lamb of God. Two disciples heard him say this, and they followed Jesus. When Jesus turned and saw them following, he said to them, What are you looking for? They said to him, Rabbi, which translated means teacher, where are you staying? He said to them, Come and see. They came and saw where he was staying, and they remained with him that day. It was about four o'clock in the afternoon. One of the two who heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first found his brother Simon and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which is translated as the Anointed. He brought Simon to Jesus, who looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You are to be called Cephas, which is translated Peter. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. How would you respond if someone asked you this question? What does your church do? What is your church for? How would you answer that question? What would you say? There's a simple exchange that takes place in our Gospel reading. Near the end of the Gospel, two disciples of John the Baptist asked Jesus, Where are you staying? The literal translation of this, which we sometimes miss, is something like this. What do you do? What are you about? What is your purpose? And Jesus responds with three simple words. Come and see. Come and see is all he says to them. Before we know it, Jesus' invitation ripples outwards like a circle on a pond. Andrew invites Peter, and Peter invites many others. Notice very carefully the three words first used by Jesus. It's a very gentle invitation. Come and see. Come and see. Not, have you given your heart to me? Not, do you know the commandments? And not, certainly not, do you know where you will spend eternity? But rather, a very gentle, come and see. Another year has ended, and we're all relieved to turn the calendar over to a new year. And even after a year of unprecedented suffering with this awful virus, violence, injustice, arrogance, prejudice and greed still abound. This is not even close to the kingdom of God that Jesus taught about. So let's be honest, our religion is not working well. 
Christianity is now seen as irrelevant by many and often as part of the problem more than any kind of solution. Pierre Teilhard de Chardin, French priest, philosopher, scientist and theologian, known for his theory that humanity is evolving mentally and socially toward a final spiritual unity, wrote these words. The future, however, is finer than any past. The future, however, is finer than any past. Despite this dire and atrocious year just past, I wonder if we could ever believe that, that the future is finer than any past. In her book called Christianity After Religion, The End of Church and the Beginning of a New Spiritual Awakening, Diana Butler Bass wrote this. What will make a difference to the future? What will make a difference to the future is awakening to a faith that fully communicates God's love. She then described this faith as molded in a love that transforms how we believe, a love that transforms what we do, a love that transforms who we are in the world. No matter what is going on around us, it's important to remember that God keeps transforming creation into something both good and new. Instead of hurtling us towards catastrophe, God always wants to bring us somewhere even better. Most people nowadays, especially the young, are turned off by how judgmental, how impractical, how restricted and ineffective that the Christian culture seems to be. It has often been said that a lot of church leaders live in a fantasy world. The fantasy goes something like this. Inspired by great worship, and even more by superb preaching, people will be leaving church making all kinds of connections between their faith and their everyday lives. And they will then want to share their faith with their friends and even invite them to church. It's a delightful vision, of course, but I have to say, pure fantasy. So here's a question. How do we get to the stage of convincing people that we are all, all of humanity, on the same journey of life? Our role on that journey is to encourage and to love our fellow travellers and to make a place where everyone feels welcome and everyone feels that they belong. How do we get to that stage that we can offer this invitation to the whole world without exception? We can offer that invitation that Jesus offered to John's disciples. Come and see. Come and see. Come and share and experience with us how true, aff true and affirming life is really meant to be lived. Bill Hybels, senior pastor of the Willow Creek Community Church in the USA, believes passionately that the local church is the hope of the world. That it addresses every human's deepest need and that the local church can lead people to a whole new way of life. A whole new way of living. A whole new way of serving. So here is my challenge for this coming year. Enormous challenge though it is, it's this. Is it possible that our church here at St. Chad's in Hopwas could move towards this vision? Could we in this church move to a time when the only three words 
that we will ever need in response to anyone who inquires about what we do is come and see. Come and see. Sounds daunting. But remember this. They were astonished. But Jesus looked at them and said, For mortals, it is impossible. But for God, all things are possible. Amen. Let us declare our faith in God by sharing together the words of the Creed. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, as you called your disciples, open our ears to your calling. Open our eyes to your presence open our hearts to your love that we may hear you and hearing you may love you and loving you may serve you whom to serve is perfect freedom through Jesus Christ the Lamb of God Amen we give you thanks, O Lord, for you have called us to know you and to proclaim you. Lord, make us worthy of our calling. May we be faithful to you in our discipleship. We pray that each in their calling may seek to do your will, that your church may be, may be attentive to your word and seek also to do your will. Lord, you are our strength. You 
are our salvation. We pray for all who are seeking to live up to their calling, for all who are striving to keep the ideals that they see. We remember all whose work has been frustrated by COVID-19 or any other circumstances. We pray for those on the furlough scheme and those who have been made redundant. We, also, we pray also for the businesses, small and large, who are struggling to stay financially afloat and those who have lost their businesses because of COVID-19. Lord, you are our strength. You are our salvation. Heavenly Father, we bring to you our communities and thank you for the way that people have been drawn closer together in looking out for each other and the vulnerable in our neighbourhoods. May we continue in this manner as you make us ever aware of our responsibilities as followers of Christ to follow his example and work to glorify God in our lives. Lord, you are our strength. You are our salvation. Father, we pray for all who labour to minister to the sick and dying and give thanks for the commitment of our doctors, nurses and carers working in hospitals, care homes and the community. Uphold them all in these desperate times and strengthen them physically, mentally and emotionally as they follow their calling to care for the sick. Lord, you are our strength. You are our salvation. We pray for all those in our communities who are suffering in body, mind and spirit because of the lockdown. For those with depression and anxiety through being isolated, those in our hospitals being treated for the virus, all waiting for hospital appointments for treatments and operations, for cancer and other life-threatening illnesses. And we thank you for the virus, the vaccine, which is now being distributed throughout our land. We also pray for our church members and friends and family who are ill at this time, remembering Beryl and Roger, Audrey, Jim, Jack, Barbara and Edwin Bott, Catherine and Derek, Melanie Lees, Leslie Fox, Dave Atkinson, and Anne Thurgood. May all who suffer come to know your healing presence in their lives and peace to face whatever the future brings them. Lord, you are our strength. You are our salvation. We pray for those who have departed this life to begin a new life with you, Lord especially Kath Solis and Terry Huxley. Give strength and comfort to their families in their grief. Lord, you are our strength. You are our salvation. And finally, Lord, may we all know the fullness of your love in our lives, helping us strengthening us through this lockdown. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let's share the words of the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Let's share the grace together and with each other. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all this day and forevermore. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.